Okay, Dr. Matu Santaniello. Um, Hello. Hi, I would just introduce you uh, as the PI and scientific collaborator of Zscribe, which is a Swiss National Science Foundation funded project. Um, Marouf and I uh, had the pleasure of meeting Dr. Matu Santaniello for the first time in 2018 at a digital paleographic conference uh, in London that she was part of organising. Um, and since then, we have been involved in many uh, conferences with her, uh, but mainly that she has organised. Uh, and she has these amazing skills at bringing people in this area together. So we're very happy uh, that she can now join us at, at our conference, bringing, um, bringing our field together. So uh, I will now hand over to you, uh, Dr. Machu Santiniello, for your project update on the slide. Thank you very much. Uh, can you hear me all right? Mm, see my screen? Everything is fine? Okay, perfect. Um, so many thanks for the, the invitation. It has been a, a great conference, and I'm sure it will be also uh, tomorrow and uh, thanks to everybody who's still here after a long day and um, i'll do my best to to keep it short so if i go a bit too fast on some elements please do not hesitate to contact me and i'll get back to you with more details so uh, i should uh, bring you out of the sphere of uh, hebrew aramaic scri scribal culture for for a few minutes um, to um, show you the material I work on uh, that are um, Greek, mostly Greek and uh, sometimes also Coptic papyri. Um, they come from Egypt and so very, very shortly a few words on the documentation. So um, Greek papyri for, from Egypt are a very important source for our literature, but also for history with um, documentary texts that, that illustrate daily lives in the, the various aspects of any um, writing productions. So from the accounts to uh, decrees and contracts. So, a, a very diverse uh, documentation and um, it is spread over a millennium and uh, we reach so far 70,000 uh, Greek texts. Um, who knows how many are unpublished and will come out of excavation in the future. Among these texts, 10% are from literature, and uh, this is one of my um, favorite examples, so the Constitution of Athens. Uh, some of you may know this text. It is very important for an, our understanding of um, democracy and uh, political philosophy of ancient Greeks, and it has survived only thanks to this role, so this unique papyrus. So it is a beautiful example, but if we have to be honest, most of the papyri in the collections are fragmentary, uh, broken uh, because of time, but also because of the antiquities market, where uh, two pieces were more valuable than one big. So to reconstruct this text, to uh, reconstruct the context of this text, uh, so far we have um, developed many uh, tools based on text, uh, encoded text that allow uh, research, but not so far um, many tools concerning images and search for images. And uh, in, for Greek paleography in general, um, Greek paleography shown in the papyri, we still rely on various books with the problem that uh, has been mentioned already in this conference of terminologies that differ according to schools, sometimes according to languages. So also the same issue that we mentioned of uh, not having um, uh, accepted typology and uh, community standards. So we're exactly in the same situation. We, we have though um, two interesting tools online. The first one is uh, PAPPAL that um, allows you to see dated examples of handwritings. 
because uh, documentary texts bear dates. And so uh, in this uh, website, you can go and have a look. If you're curious, you want to see samples of a handwriting that is from the year 525, you type it and you see um, a securely dated example of handwritings. But they are for a documentary text because literary texts uh, have, um, don't bear uh, dates we don't have the color forms like we can have in, in the Middle Ages. So very few literary texts are that table, thanks to uh, external evidence, like a documentary text on the other side of the document, or archaeological context, or archives that are otherwise dated. So there is um, this second project that collected examples of date table text, but you can see already the question, how do you date it? How solid is the hypothesis of the datation? But still, it gives you an idea. Um, the question of the typology is complicated and, and in this debated. How do you define the styles, the scripts? We, are, we don't have the situation that uh, Professor Schlanger showed us about geographical and chronological uh, distinctions. So there are several styles that are coevals, and uh, there has not been uh, geographical differentiation spotted so far. So that's how my project um, got uh, created, that I uh, conceived my project around three uh, major issues, reuniting fragments, identifying scribes and characterizing scripts. You will recognize some thematics that we heard <laughs> this last two days. So this project describes is funded by the Swiss National Science Foundation. It has started in September 2018. So we're uh, more than uh, halfway already. And it is a small team compared to several projects that we have seen uh, with uh, a technical assistant and student assistants. Um, you can find several elements on the website uh, describes.org and the um, to um, investigate the possibility of computational paleography on papyri, I chose three case studies that are um, complementary, that addresses uh, various issues. Um, each of these three case studies would have been enough for four years and, and more collaborators than I have, but it allows me to jump from one aspect to the other and to take the pros and cons of the various uh, corpora. So the first one is the Iliad of Homer, so it's diachronic over the millennium of papyrology. It's several um, scripts, several uh, uh, styles, and uh, from bookhand, very nice calligraphic examples to cursive, um, very close to documentary hands. Um, the second is the Dioscorus archive, and I will um, start by this one. And uh, I, I won't have time to develop the Papas archive, which is a pop, uh, an archive that has been found in a jar. So we are really in the, the, the situation of a jigsaw puzzle. But as Nahum Dershowitz said, uh, a puzzle without all the pieces and without the general images of what should be the results. So um, since I don't have much time, I would like to develop the, the case study that is on writer identification. And the Dioscorus archive is the biggest archive that we have that come from a single village, over 700 papyri. Um, and so it offers the opportunity to find uh, samples of various writers and to understand the position of these writers uh, within the, the village society. Um, and also, it has the possibility to investigate the big graphism. So people writing in Greek and Coptic, but I have to say that this has not been uh, done yet, but it potentially is here. So just to show you an example that um, will um, make the link with uh, James Moore presentation yesterday, we have here a contract that is signed by several people that uh, as witnesses, uh, give their names, their um, job, and um, 
and signed by their name, uh, by their hand. So we have very nice samples and you can see that some are uh, really uh, almost calligraphic. And this example, for example, is uh, of a priest. So the priest that writes in a calligraphic way, like it would copy the Bible. I hope that you can see on the screen. <laughs> okay, so um, um, to, to get the most out of the, the means that I had, I chose to, to go in two directions, to prepare data for the computer scientists to collaborate with me and to um, make visible my results for the scholars. So from the papyrologists, my colleague papyrologists. So um, to prepare the data, um, I had the chance to be able to collaborate with several teams and to publish data sets. Um, one data set on, um, on binarization that I will come back later. One data set that has been mentioned with uh, the presentation of Hussein this morning Oh, this afternoon, and uh, one uh, with the University of Casino. So um, shortly, the GR key papyri data set is uh, uh, for writer identification. And so um, I built with Hussein uh, the most solid ground truth that I could. So I picked uh, texts that are signed explicitly um, by notaries that means um, the same kind of people from the same place, from the same period, writing the same kind of documents. Because we mentioned also that when you write a letter or a draft, or when you write a doc an official document, your personal style may change. So I tried really to gather the most coherent data set and the strongest. And um, you had some examples very quickly um, with Hussein's presentation. So it, it is uh, cursive handwriting. And um, I, I collected the, the images from the various collections. So there is no harmonization in the digitization of the images. So you can see, for example, the color uh, in this picture doesn't mean anything. It, it is more uh, uh, um, characteristic of the image of the avatar, digital avatar, that is the image that of the papyrus. Okay, so um, I could extend the first data set to uh, one, from 50 to 120 images and with more writers, but that includes samples, of, only one sample for some writers and samples of smaller size. But now I have all the contracts that could, um, that preserve their signature from the Dioscorus archive that are uh, in this data set. And um, this data set has been used um, by uh, colleagues to um, investigate if a segmentation in a row can be useful for writer identification. Um, moving from 122 images to 6,000 lines samples, is, does that make a difference and um, in the, the possibility for uh, writer identification? And uh, there are still ongoing work on, uh, on this task with uh, Vincent Christline and the forthcoming article, uh, Professor Imran Siddiqui also from Islamabad and Hussein Mohammed, uh, Tanmon Modai, and a new collaborator that is Dr. Arundhati Tarafdar. So if you are very um, eager to know about this publication and also about Jema and Marouf and Mladen and, and Lambert's uh, presentation last year in the Neopaleography conference uh, held in Basel, uh, um, the, for, the, the proceedings are coming, but in the meantime, you can have a look at the videos that are online in the, the Describes project. Um, and so that was for the computer science part, but for my colleagues, papyrologists, uh, I built it, um, a showcase from the database that uh, work with. So it is uh, thanks to the IIIF standard that uh, I can um, give the visualization of um, the various parts of the documents. So uh, each uh, contract has been uh, annotated with the areas written by different person. So I can display the various writers on one document and the various samples for each writer over different documents. 
Um, and this allows comparison and visual work um, much easier than uh, without. So we have three categories of samples, the body of the contracts that are uh, um, securely attributed, the subscription themselves, like in modern uh, handwritings, your signature may be different from your regular handwriting. So it is labeled differently. And the third category is the samples that have been attributed um, on paleographical grounds by scholars. So it, is, has, it has been uh, treated separately and we can um, investigate how strong is this attribution on paleographical grounds. So it will come with an article on um, who were the notaries in Dioscorus archive and it, it joins the, the, the way uh, Jima has presented her work uh, later in uh, earlier in the conference. So combining the paleographic analysis with inner evidence of the personality of the individuality of the scribes. Do they make orthographic mistakes? Do they prefer some uh, words in drawing contracts than others? So and this is um, um, the other um, aspect for, for scholars. And uh, very shortly on the Iliad, uh, we have stumbled on the problem of binarization that has been mentioned. And like Maruf showed, it is very difficult to uh, binarize uh, uh, some papyri according to the resolution of the images. So that led us to uh, think about what is color in, uh, um, in, the, in this papyrus images and to build a free software. Uh, if you go to yerax.ch, you will be able to download this small software that is uh, that has um, enhancement um, criteria, um, enhancement parameters uh, for um, papyrus. So if you want to have a look, um, and uh, and the viewer to compare. I know Jima. I'm hurry. I'm rushing. <laughs> Promise. <laughs> so if you were to compare the two two different uh, images, and so uh, to look to the future now with the Iliad uh, data set, we have over 500 images of the Iliad across uh, 1,000 years, and we are building the ground truth. So images that we know belong to the same manuscript. And uh, we would like to uh, see how, what are the best methods now to find uh, script classification uh, across these images. And also we would like to go on and shape, later shape comparison. We have said that it is not the only thing to look at in paleography, but uh, it can also be um, one aspect to get into the text. So uh, with uh, this uh, read platform, uh, I'm building this kind of album that, uh, uh, we have mentioned already. So if you want to, to stay updated the computational uh, paleography community, uh, I could invite you to subscribe to the mailing list. And as uh, Hussein said, there will be this uh, workshop of computational paleography in September, hopefully in person. Sorry for the time. I knew it was a challenge, but I'm done. Thank you. Thank you, Isabel. Uh, it was really great to hear. Um on you.